I used to say that the only two days you couldn't show up on social media is if your house is burning down or you died. But if your house is burning down, you'll probably get a lot of likes and comments. So you need to put that up on your uh, social media. So only day you can't show up is if you die, right? It's MLM time and the MLMs have been up to no good. guys, it's Madison Harnish back in my blue kitchen for another crazy video. I also, of course, changed up my hair. I had to cut some quarantine bangs. They're probably gonna get in my eyes constantly through this video, so I'm really rethinking a lot of my life decisions right now. Unfortunately, MLM representatives have taken this time during the pandemic to continue to boldly push their business scheme with no shame and recruit and target the most vulnerable people that they can possibly find. And it's mind blowing to me and it's upsetting, especially the fact that it's escalating as this is getting worse or as we're getting deeper into the months of quarantine, they're escalating their tactics. They're becoming more and more bold. It is imperative that we right now help spread the word of scams going on because right now is the time when people are the most vulnerable and scam artists see this as the perfect opportunity to swoop in and sell their business opportunities. It really says a lot about who you are and what you're selling if your business opportunity is doing the best when people are at their worst. In this video today, I also wanted to highlight an incredible, incredible source for updates and news on MLM activity, and that is anti-MLM Instagram accounts. Anti-MLM Instagram accounts have been on the front lines, constantly giving updates as to what's going on, holding MLM reps accountable, keeping record of what they're saying, the claims that they're making, even with this FTC crackdown that's going on. I think that they're doing incredible work. They need way more credit than they're getting, in my opinion. And so a big part of today's video is I'm not only gonna showcase what MLM reps are saying, but I'm also gonna showcase my favorite anti-MLM accounts. So yeah, if you're not already subscribed, but you enjoy deep dives into unethical business practices, scams, and other crazy stuff going on on the internet, definitely subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And well, let's get into the video. I wanna highlight a really important term regarding this entire situation. But let's look at what fear mongering is because that's a huge tactic that MLM representatives are deploying right now in these circumstances. Fear mongering or scare mongering is the spreading of frightening and exaggerated rumors of an impending danger to purposefully arouse fear in order to manipulate the public. Advertisers have entered the arena with their discovery that fear sells. Ad campaigns based on fear, sometimes referred to as shock vertising, have become increasingly popular in recent years. Fear is a strong emotion and it can be manipulated to sway people into making emotional rather than reasoned choices. If you are trying to boost yourself at the expense of others, using their fear to control and manipulate them, that is gross. You should not be doing that. And it shouldn't be allowed in my opinion. And unfortunately, this is not the first time an economic decline has brought about many scams. Okay, Pew. for the example, for the example, <laughs> for an example, during the depression, that's when the envelope stuffing scam emerged, which was literally just a Ponzi scheme. During the Great Recession, investment fraud and other consumer scams were rampant. So we know that any sort of economic recession causes scams to flourish. Government agencies like the Federal Trade Commission and Federal Deposit Insurance Corps issued warnings for Americans to be vigilant 
as con artists attempt to steal from consumers spooked by an onslaught of bad news related to COVID-19. And that's extremely scary to me as someone who's part of the anti-MLM community who has put tons of hours into trying to help spread the word and stop MLMs from rising. So the first anti-MLM Instagram account that I want to highlight is anti underscore MLM underscore boss babe. Think on it. Will it take some work? Of course it will. Everything worth having in life takes some effort. Is there risk? No, there's not. Did you know consultants have a full 60 day window to change their mind and get a full refund on business kits? There's no risk. Is there reward? If you agree a new stream of income, awesome gifts, and up to 6,000 in bonus is a reward, then yes, there's reward waiting for you. There's no risk, no, what? I mean, yeah, you do have to purchase like a starter kit and you do have to pay to play, but you have a full, not, not half of 60 days, a full 60 day window to get a refund. So, you know, no risk, absolutely none. I also just have to say, I hate whenever the word up to is used. You have like a clearance rack and it says up to 75% off. And you're like, oh my gosh, 75% off? No, it says up to. But the majority of the like clothes in that rack are like 10% off. It's okay to ask questions, seek clarity, and wonder if this could possibly be something you would want to join. It's not just okay, it's the right thing to do. I did the same thing. I had so many questions and concerns, but if I had let that hold me back, I would still be in a place where I was unhappy both mentally and financially. It's never the question that's holding you back. For example, if I had a question where my question was like, what would happen if I jumped off this bridge? And someone was like, it's okay to ask that question, but don't let it hold you back. Well, no, it's not the question that's gonna hold me back, it's the answer that's gonna hold me back from doing it. If the answer is you will jump off that bridge and you will injure yourself or die, I'm not gonna do it. That's gonna hold me back from jumping off that bridge. Fun fact Friday. Fun fact, r and was built to become a billion dollar company during a recession. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that they're built to thrive off of a recession? I mean, maybe it's just because they take advantage of people who are struggling during an economic downturn by giving them a false sense of hope and security. Fact, direct sales flourishes during economic downturns. It's just the facts. It's just statistics. Just because direct sales flourishes does not mean the people in direct sales flourish. In fact, the people in direct sales are being taken advantage of. And anyone that's trying to recruit you during this time isn't recruiting you so that you can thrive. It's so that they can take advantage of your vulnerability to suck more money out of you. Fact, I love my job. Interested and want details? Let's set up a time to chat this week. Italy is freaking blowing up. The world may be shut down, but network marketing is not. A, that's tragic that a country that's struggling so severely during this pandemic is also being attacked by MLMs. Second off, Sec, sec, yeah, second off, it's just odd that this is something to be proud of. Let's get rid of the MLM layer. Let's pretend that you are selling foot cream. You're selling foot cream. Imagine targeting a country that is struggling right now with your foot cream and then going on social media and bragging about how much your foot cream is selling to a country that's struggling right now. Like not even really acknowledging that, just saying like, oh yeah, look at Italy. 
our foot cream hit record numbers in Italy. No other company is going online being like, look it, we're selling out right now. For example, Netflix, Hulu, this is a really good time for them. Evidently, most people are in home, don't have much to do, so they're gonna be watching more Netflix, more Hulu, but you don't see Netflix employees and representatives going online on social media being like, our sales hit record numbers in Italy. No, no one's doing that because obviously that's stupid and insensitive. You know, you know. On to our next anti MLM Instagram account, Anti Beach Body Coach. And they have some awesome posts on Beach Body and that whole network. We're going to look into some of them and see how Beach Body Coaches, coaches, are reacting during the pandemic. Consistency is key you have to show up every single day and it's so weird when i say every single day people think that means whenever they want no but you literally say when you're recruiting work whenever you want this is on your time you get to spend time with your kids but then you're saying consistently show up every day like no it's not on your time every day means every single freaking day Okay, so I used to say that the only two days you couldn't show up on social media is if your house is burning down or you died. But if your house is burning down, you'll probably get a lot of likes and comments. So you need to put that up on your uh, social media. So only day you can't show up is if you die, right? Big yikes on that one, just big yikes. What's funny is they're very anti-traditional jobs where you're trapped. With a traditional job, if your house was burning down, you would not be encouraged to, <laughs> to continue posting and working your job. This post really pisses me off. This post really pisses me off, but okay. So another beach body coach posted something that says, and I love the sticker that's covering their face, like bravo, bravo. But anyways, security. When you work for someone else, your job isn't in your control. You don't pick your coworkers. You don't pick when you'll get a raise. You might not get to pick your hours. Your livelihood is in someone else's hands. When the economy tanked years ago, so many people were laid off. A side hustle would have been a huge blessing. Even if you love your job like I do, it's a smart move. Needed now more than ever. There we go. There we go, folks. Few things on this one. First one, it's just so upsetting to me personally that they are using this, this lack of job security right now and that a lot of people's livelihoods are up in the air. It's upsetting that they're using this as a tactic to push an MLM business. It's so upsetting to me. I don't know why. I just think it's one of the worst things that they've done yet. Maybe that's just my opinion, but I think it's one of the worst things that they've done yet because so many people are going through it right now really going through it. On top of that though, MLMs are not a secure business whatsoever. Whatsoever. I mean, I talked about this a little bit with the Tyra Banks MLM, Tyra Beauty, and how it just shut down out of nowhere, decided to shut down and left all of these beauty tainers in the dust with no way of making up their investments that they put into the company by purchasing a bunch of product and then no backup plan. They just stopped their direct selling model completely. And guess what? Any MLM company can do that. With the crackdowns that the FTC has made on MLM companies, if the FTC continues to do that, which is amazing and they should, guess what? Some MLMs might decide that's not worth their trouble. They don't wanna be fined millions and millions of dollars by the FTC, and it might be better for them to just completely cut off their direct smell, their direct smelling, their direct selling model and just go full retail. Any MLM company can do that at any moment that they want to. And there's really nothing stopping them since these people are legally independent contractors. They're not attached to the company and they have no rights and no employee benefits. The company is truly free to do whatever it wants. When this happens, MLM reps are gonna be left in the dust. So to say that MLMs are a secure job right now could not be farther from the truth. Another one of my absolute favorite anti-MLM Instagram accounts, 
this person's amazing. They've been so supportive of me, which I highly appreciate. Y'all, I just paid off my $60,000 of debt. Debt that kept me up at night. Debt that had me curled up in my closet in tears. Debt I never thought I'd see gone. I'm in shock. This never would have been possible without Monate. I'm forever grateful. As anti-shampoo dealer points out, that's literally a version of an income claim. You're claiming that with Monate, you are able to generate enough income to pay off $60,000 of debt. Likely story. That purple slide um, is the FTC approved income disclosure statement per rank in Monate. Um, not everyone joins the company as a market partner to sell. A lot of people join for the discount. So this is an MLM rep for Monate trying to convince people that the numbers that they are looking at aren't really a big deal. Like, it's not really a big deal. Like, you just don't understand it. But like, actually, most people don't even want to make money. That's why they don't. Because like, you know, some people just buy the product, they don't even want money. They're like, make money? Nah, I'm just gonna buy the product and spend money on this business. That's why they're not making money. They don't want to, duh. I mean, who wants to make money nowadays? Or join with the intention of maybe building a business and choose not to. The intention of building a business and choose not to. Why? Is it because they realize it's probably not a good opportunity for them? Or is it because, <sighs> I just don't want to build a business, ah, make money, ah. In tons of emails for Nordstrom having sales, grocery stores or um, restaurants doing sales on carryout, sales on pre-made meals. So her first text says, people rallying around small business support as we should. Okay, that's good. Starting off to a good start here. Business owner is saying we have to support these people, which is true. We have to order out as much as we can. We have to stimulate the economy if we can. We have to, we have a duty, we have an obligation to support these small business owners. But then you have this other demographic of people. So then the text changes to, but then there's a very special, very special demographic of people who want to scream that people who can work from home have no right to work. From what she said in the first red text to there is the equivalent of no offense, but you know, she literally just did that with small businesses that are staying open or people that are working who want to tell everyone who can work how dare you work how dare you she literally is thinking that she's doing something here she is thinking that she is doing something that she is convincing us that she is this amazing point and she's telling us how it is meanwhile it just is like um excuse me how dare i work while you are trying to push me into your legal pyramid scheme? I run a small business, two small businesses. I have my photography business that's generated zero income for my household for six months and counting. And I have my money business that generates an income. I can work from home. And then this text says, I can work from home and I have an obligation to work from home. It's my duty to work from home if I can to shame people for working right now, which is something that I've been trying to be cautious of doing because obviously people right now need to work. They need to start their business. They need to launch businesses if they've been planning it. Like that's all acceptable, you know? Like that should be accepted right now. My issue is people who are exploiting others off of this pandemic and trying to maximize profits as much as possible during the pandemic at the expense of others. That's the issue. I can, I can work from home. And not only can I right now, I am obligated to. It's my duty as an American who is able to work from home to generate an income to support my family, 
to generate an income to continue supporting the other causes that I support on a monthly basis, which runs into about five figures a month. Okay, I have an obligation to them. And I have an obligation to continue working to generate an income to support the businesses that had to modify their business model during COVID. Is it wrong to quit working if I can? Yeah. Is it wrong to quit working if you're working from home? Not at all. No one has ever said that. No one. The issue is when your job is reliant on recruiting others and getting them to put money into your business opportunity. Then it crosses a line from working your business to the exploitation of vulnerable people who are struggling right now. And you're saying you're reliant on them for your income? Hmm. Maybe you need to rethink that business model. Because not only am I letting my family down, not able to put food on our table, pay our mortgage, I'm letting down everyone else who relies on me as a consumer to stimulate the economy. So the people who are so upset that home-based businesses are continuing to work, your scarcity mindset is what is wrong with people. Not me, not what I do for a living. What you're doing is the problem or not doing. I mean, what you're saying is a problem. We have a problem with your mindset that it is okay to exploit people during this time, that it is okay to ask people to put money into this business during this time. And you very much know that there is a small possibility, very small, that they would succeed in this and that really all they're doing is lining your pocket. And your attitude that you are doing a service to the world by doing this is up. It's up. Whew, got heated there, but oh my gosh. I, I'm sorry guys, you know me, I'm usually never mean or harsh or anything, but that just got to me. Another post from an anti-shampoo dealer. I can't understand some segments of society that criticize those who are trying to use the time to get better during this crisis. I wonder if they think that it would be better for the world if we all just watched news or binged series while eating snacks all day. Hashtag be part of the solution. As if selling their MLM right now is a great opportunity that's somehow helping people. How are you helping people? Like even if this would be a good business opportunity down the line, even if what you are asking upfront is for people to spend lots of money on this MLM in buying product, lots of time in recruiting people, their family members, how can you possibly sit on your high horse? How? And think that you are somehow part of the solution. No, it's the people speaking out against scams like you that are part of the solution. Here is a crazy, highly immoral video of an MLM rep trying to explain why you should put your stimulus check money into their MLM business. Have you guys got your stimulus check because I did a poll, um, but... <laughs> That $1,200, that is freaking awesome. I'm super excited for you. You know, do what you got to do with your money. Um, but if you are one of the people that has been wanting to join my team, take $199 out of that and invest it in your business. Get hella product for it and start working and double, triple that money 100% your first month. Let's do it. I mean, what's stopping you? If I was in a really desperate situation and I got my stimulus money, but I needed more, it wasn't enough. As we know is the case for a lot of people right now. When she says 100%, you will double or triple your stimulus check money. I might be willing to take that bet. I mean, she's saying 100%, I will double or triple it? Dang, like that's a lot of money that's very needed for a lot of people right now. Here's another MLM rep trying to explain why she will continue 
to talk about MLMs during this pandemic. Let's take a look at that. I thought of an analogy that I wanted to share with you before I got on here and started talking about something, talking about this opportunity. Imagine you're driving down the highway and you see a friend or a family member with a flat tire and you have everything in your trunk to fix the flat tire, okay? Or imagine them drowning in the middle of the ocean and you have this like lifeboat where you could save them. That is how I feel every single time I share this opportunity. Here we have MLM rep, Savior and Grace. They are helping everyone saving all of us during this time. Where would we be without the MLM rep who sees us in trouble and says, not to worry, buy my hair products and all your answers will be solved. It is not about me, you guys. It's not about her. That's why she's telling other people to put money in. I'm gonna be very, very, very transparent with you guys. I have built my business enough in the last two and a half years that I don't have to work. I literally don't even have to be on here talking about this. Then why are you talking to me and trying to recruit others into your pyramid scheme? Why? If you literally don't have to work, then literally go away. Go away. Don't bother people. That would be the solution to everything. So the anti-MLM Instagram page, anti-MLM beauty, has a post on young living lies. And basically, an MLM rep is claiming that there's PubMed studies on how thieves has the ability to inhibit even the growth of multi-drug resistant bacteria. And then they say, we've got to have the immune system support that is thieves working through us, which means ingesting it, at all times. And then anti-MLM beauty comments, I read this study and I'm genuinely curious. I see the four essential oils bay cinnamon bark, clove, and pimento berry inhibited EHEC biofilm formation by more than 75%, which is great to use on surfaces, but how does thieves provide immune support? And then the person replies, each oil in thieves is extremely antibacterial and antiviral, which in turn is boosting the immune system. And then anti-MLM beauty replies, how does cleaning surfaces with it boost your immune system? You really shouldn't be ingesting oils. And they reply, actually you can. I don't ingest any essential oils besides Young Living. Seed to seal is a higher standard than organic because they have been approved by the FDA for ingestion. I don't clean with this oil. I put it on my skin and in a veggie capsule. It is infused in all of Young Living's cleaning products since it is so amazing for the immune system. On Young Living's page, they say for distributors, which I have to give credit where credit's due. I'm really glad that MLM companies now are coming out saying, don't say this, don't say that, really trying to enforce FTC regulations. That's good. That's good at least. So Young Living says, say this, not that. For thieves, they say, to say, make general cleaning claims like thieves removes dirt and grime from surfaces. Not that, referring to no references to antibacterial or antiviral are permitted. Young Living themselves is saying that. So what are you doing, silly? You silly goof, what are you doing? This is hilarious because this is an MLM rep trying to talk about how annoying the loom scam people are and how they keep messaging her about putting a hundred dollars into something and stop messaging me. This is just so annoying. All right. I've done this 14 times. I'm trying to be nice, but you guys, I'm truly sick of getting tagged and trying to get a hundred dollars out of me. I'm sick of getting tagged in this. Like, can you stop messaging me? Stop randomly bothering me in my day and messaging me out of the blue. It's borderline spam. If you need $100 or $700, you need to sign up with Monate because what you're doing is illegal and what I'm doing is 
legal, you guys. What I'm doing is legal. That's why the FTC cracked down on my company and other MLMs because this is a totally legitimate opportunity that is not illegal in any way. As a Mon8 market partner, all you're required to do is buy one product pack. That's it. If you decide that you want more product after your product it's pack, simple. great. It's easy. If you decide that you don't want to recruit anybody for a team, great. If you decide that you just want it for the discount, great. You guys, there's no monthly quotas, there's no monthly buy-in fees, there's no monthly anything to receive commission. You buy it once, that's it, call it a day. You buy it once. I love how they talk about the discounts that you get if you sign up. All that discount is, is the company looked at their margins and they're like, okay, let's account for this extra margin on top of what we would normally charge for our product to account for distributors getting paid. And they just upped the price of that product. So all you're doing with getting the discount is paying to be able to pay for a product at its normal rate instead of an increased margin rate to account for distributors. So how am I a pyramid scheme and illegal, but yet you're trying to collect $100 from everybody? People who are anti MLM are very much anti loom scam. Like, And yeah, that's really all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. For those that have sent me emails, I'm hoping to get back to you guys soon. I've just had a huge influx of emails to respond to and my overwhelming social anxiety has made it difficult. But thank you guys for emailing me, for reaching out. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are doing well. Until next time, have a good one.